There we go. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Got one guy with the hat, one bald guy, and one hippie. With <laughs> long hair. Dude, I'm going for the David Cassidy, you know, <laughs> Life Garrett. There we go. Look, man. Now we're all <clears throat> on equal plane. Yeah. Laird Hamilton in your little beach house there. Yeah. Now, don't you want to know how I got this screen on here? Considering we're not on Zoom. So. <laughs> oh, I, saw, yeah. I, already, I found oh. the green screen background. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, they the, have that on uh, StreamYard? Yeah. Yeah. Down in the uh, cam mic settings. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. All Let's right. So, All right. So what are we talking about? <laughs> talking about uh, Ben's mug. Oh, the mug. The mug. You saw the. Can you see the mug? I can't. Don't show the other side yet. I'm not showing the other side. Okay. So <laughs> uh, I thought what we would do is we would talk about those four points exactly yeah. as they're listed. Really? Yeah. I thought you were kind of being facetious about that. No, like let's let's go for it. I mean. I don't want to give it away since we are streaming live, but like, like I think we could just talk seriously about that stuff. Okay. You up for that, Jonathan? Do you remember yeah. seeing the picture? What, do, can the I show points? Deal? Can I like? Yeah, I was being a little sarcastic last night, but <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> All right, I guess we're not doing that. Okay. No, I no, like the title. I was uh, scared. <laughs> no, well, I we, think. Let's roll with it. Okay. Well, I want to hear some case studies too. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. In depth, in depth case studies, numbers, CTRs, awesome. CPAs, AOVs, all the all the acronyms. All the acronyms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll do well, the whole. Sh we'll do the whole show using nothing but acronyms. <laughs> so I'm wondering if I should warn anybody else that's coming on that they may not get prepped. Uh, <laughs> Probably yes. Uh, no, yeah. This is this is like when we meet at uh, Casual Pint. This is the same thing. Like yep. we just talk about whatever. That's right. Whatever. But today we're going to talk about Facebook ads. So okay, that, that's the whatever today. That's but wherever fine. it goes, it goes. Flash references, eighties movies. Like it doesn't matter. It's all good. I know uh, you're a regular listener, so you know uh, how this goes. Yeah. So th there's your eighties movie. Say okay, Ferris. So so there's I'm, I've covered your eighties movie right. for the entire show. There you go, appreciate it. All right, save. Ferris. I just introduced that movie to my thirteen year old. Oh wow! For the first yeah. time a few weeks ago, and he yeah. was like, "That's that's a pretty good movie." Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's awesome. stood up. It stood the test of time for sure. Yeah. And didn't, your, right. other son, didn't your other son didn't he just get his driver's license or something? Well, it's a sixteen year old. He's right. he's a little late. It's his like his fourth time taking it. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Are you kidding? No, I'm not. I wish he I was. Did, he did way better than me. Then that's all. Awesome. <laughs> he's oh, like, he shows no motivation in driving, and finally, I'm like, Nah, you're gonna get it, dude. You're gonna get it. Yes, I don't that's understand a, that. That's a younger I, generation thing. Like they, they're just not. Is. They're not doing it anymore. I don't get it. Yeah, I, I couldn't wait to get mine. Yeah, I, I, I was down there that day. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the doors opened. I was there. Of course, I was related to everybody there. So <laughs> we all went in the same vehicle down there, but still. Yeah. All right. Let's go get rolling. My beer's getting warm. That's uh, right. And our audience is waiting. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Right. Three, two, and one. All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. I'm Jonathan Taylor, along with Sean McCool. And we've got a special guest in the studio today. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I like that. The one Me? and only Ben Blackman. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Ben. Hey, good to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, so we've got Ben Blackman from One Focus Marketing, and uh, we're going to be talking about some uh, Facebook conversions today. I think yeah. that's what we're talking about. Conversions. Facebook. Yeah, we're going to be talking about four steps to creating ad five steps to creating ads that convert. Okay. All right. So and, just uh, to give you, just to give our listeners a little background. So when Sean, when we first started getting together, 
a casual pint. Ben was part of our group. So we'd converge at the casual pint, have a beer. Of course, Ben didn't have a beer. He would uh, have his little green tea or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and we just talked marketing. And so that's that's how this all started out. So I can't believe yeah. we waited this long to have Ben on. I mean, come on. I know. We were waiting for him to invite us onto his sh- podcast, but that that's never right. happened. But, so. Joe, mine's only 10 minutes, man. <laughs> it's only 10 minutes. Yeah, hey, we're already... Five minutes in. That's what I'm saying. We'll be out, you know, before we got started. Get yeah. straight to the point. All right. Yeah, no, so. no, this is this is a much more rambling podcast, so you're just gonna have to to roll with it. Oh, nobody said I wasn't rambling on that one too. I'm just, you know, it's a, it's a confined ramble. Right, confined ramble. Very yeah. good. That is uh, <laughs> Facebook. What is it with the twang? I'm trying Facebook to ad, Facebook ads with a twang. Facebook ads with a twang. Of course, so why? Oh, you were against. You were against that <laughs> title. So why is it called with the twang? Could you tell us? Yeah, I, you got to figure it out. That's right. You know, that's the part of it. That's the twang. Figure that's it out. Twang. <laughs> uh, All you, right. got, you got one person on here that said, I think you, you know, you should just own it. And you got one, another person that said, I wouldn't use that <laughs> as a title. So, you know, you, you just got to make a decision. So that's what that's I right. And, and I was lazy. I didn't want to try to think of another title. So that helped. Oh. Well, obviously, you made the right decision. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I did. I really did. All, all right. right. So here's the problem. I got to reintroduce Ben because I just realized my my uh, my speakers were set on my computer. So I don't think our audio, the podcast audio audience, heard the uh, heard Ben talk. But <laughs> see what I put up with, Ben. <laughs> The StreamYard stuff really is is throwing me off, but but just in case our our podcast, our audio podcast audience didn't hear, it's Ben Blackman, One Focus Marketing, joining us today. We're yeah. going to be talking about Sean, five steps to creating Facebook ads that convert. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, All right. Facebook is a registered trademark of Facebook and is not endorsed or sponsored <laughs> yeah. by this show. Zuck hadn't said it's okay. No, it is not. <laughs> or maybe he has. I, I don't really know. Yeah. All so, right. Beverage. Time. Beverage time. So guest always kicks it off. So uh so Ben, what do you have in the in the mug there? Well, the uh so so we're we're going off the mug, right? And and the yeah. mug that I have says five steps to creating ads that convert. Now I created this mug, as y'all mm-hmm. know, and the and I, I without giving it all away, the very first thing on it says take a course. So you may not be able to see that. And so I, I, I said that because I think that's usually what happens, right? You're trying to learn how to do Facebook ads. And, you know, the first thing is you go to YouTube, right? How to do well, Facebook. before we get to that, though, just just tell yeah. us what's in the in the mug, not <laughs> well, on the mug. In the mug. I mean, I'm yeah. sorry, man. No, you're jumping ahead of the show, man. Dude, I'm, I, I'm out there. <laughs> I, for all I know, I'm not even being recorded. <laughs> you may not be. <laughs> you may not be. We don't know. So well, that you know, doesn't really matter, does it? Take a chance. Yeah. So, so that was a great teaser, though. Great teaser. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll yeah. talk about yeah. courses yeah. in a second. So what's um, in the mug? Well, in this one, this is the cheapest green tea I could find. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's uh, Newman's own or something like that. <laughs> Definitely not high quality. <laughs> and I love it. Um, that, that high quality stuff. I just doesn't do it. I mean, me. I bet your cupboard's full of Newman's, it, Newman's oh, own yeah. dressing. No, 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 no. I'm not the <laughs> dog food, though. Okay. Newman's dog food. Really? It's good stuff. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, Jonathan, what do you have? I'm going to let you go first because I just oh. remembered my bottle opener is over here. So while you're introducing, I'm going to run grab it. Okay. Go ahead. I'll wait. <laughs> so, because uh, he needs to be here for this reveal. The reveal. Very yeah. good. I like I ha- that. There we go. I had to wait for you, Jonathan, because the name of this one is you can't miss it, right? So, so this is a heckin' oh, wow. chonker, <laughs> heckin' chonker, and it's a cat uh, looking. Well, thing. I was going to say it either looks like a weird anchor or is that cat Latvian or? Oh, I see the whiskers now. Yeah. Oh, I see the head. Okay, I didn't even get that. That's yeah. crazy. All right, so this is a bourbon barrel aged pastry stout with vanilla, coming in at a hefty two ten point five ABV. Um, 
Now, this is interesting. I did not know this before I, I did this show, and I, I wasn't even sure if I was going to mention this. Not sure I should. But this is from uh, Fair State Brewing, which is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh. And uh, right now, <laughs> literally on their website right now, it says, we are closed. You're wow. kidding. Yeah, oh, it says, man. we are closed Friday, 529 through Monday, 6-1. Wow. If you place an order, the store will be available for pickup when we reopen. Is it because of the rioting? Or? I didn't, it doesn't say that, but I right. think it's, uh, I thought of all the beers I could have picked, isn't it kind of synchronicity that in a, in kind of a weird way that wow. I would pick a beer from M Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. So crazy. So, uh, but I like that the fat weird. cat. So I thought it was pretty cool. I thought in the name, I guess that's probably something up. That sounds like something you'd hear in like Minnesota or Wisconsin. I don't, I don't, chonker. I don't understand the pastry part of it. You said pastry. Yeah. So it's a barrel aged pastry stout. So here's what it says on the website. A big luxurious brew blended bourbon barrel aged pastry stout with vanilla. Tasty notes, big sticky vanilla oak spirit character, chocolate allergens, wheat. That's all it says. <laughs> it looks like it's uh speaking of pastry it's got the duncan call that's kind of a duncan donut color yes. right yes hmm. probably not uh they probably wouldn't like you saying that because then they might get sued or something but <laughs> so we'll just Strike we'll just yeah. <laughs> we'll just say it's orange and pink <laughs> what's the uh, uh, alcohol on that one again 10.5 mm, wow so that'll be great for doing one today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the uh, follow-up call uh, is a, is a call with an attorney. So that'll be fun. Oh, nice. After this, after we record this. So not in a bad way, just we're, we're uh, training on some copy on what you can and can't say in the world of Facebook mm. and copy and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of dovetails right into some of our conversations, but uh, no legal advice will be shared on this show. At least not anything good. No good legal advice will be shared on this show. <laughs> So, Jonathan, now that you have your bottle opener, what do you have? <clears throat> well, straight from Kentucky, Ben's home state. In that, that's your home state, right? Uh, good enough. Good enough. Somewhere in Kentucky, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I got a Kentucky bourbon barrel strawberry, strawberry uh -oh. ale, something uh -oh. new. Kind of getting a little summer time to the bourbon barrel ale there. I like that. Yeah. So, yeah, we're both doing bourbon cool. barrel today. So, that's good. So, where was that made? Lexington. Right there. It's uh, I've actually been by when Sean and I have talked about it. I've, I've been up through, um, so their like their, their, uh, brew, their brewery is right there off of the I 75 mm -hmm. before you get up into, uh, I guess when you hit that 64 75 junction. Mm -hmm. And, um, so right off the interstate there, you go towards the, uh, I guess towards campus university of Kentucky and you can see it, man. It's pretty nice. Pretty cool little spot. I've tried to get like a tour there before, but uh, they didn't answer the phone when I called them. I, I they wouldn't even leave. You couldn't even leave a message or anything. So it just it's kind of weird. But yeah. Uh, wow. but yeah, I love their uh, I love their ales. So we'll see. It's um, not sure about the strawberry. You know. Yeah, that'll be the that's the wild card. You went a little went a little crazy. You haven't not you have not done well with fruits lately. So we'll see how this one pans yeah. out. All right, I like it. Nice. All right, Stand gentlemen. Time. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, mm. Mine, <laughs> mine's good. <laughs> Jonathan struck out again. <laughs> no good, Jonathan. No fruits Afraid for not. you. And here's the problem. Founders, Kentucky bourbon barrel. Every time I go with the fruit, I like a little, uh, you know, a little tangy, tanginess. I end up just get, it gives me a bad taste. So I got to stay away from this tarty stuff. Yeah. Give it to your wife. <laughs> I don't think she would drink this. It really tastes like kombucha. Have you ever had a kombucha? You know, they, I, kombucha? I keep seeing kombucha here in the store. They now have a hard kombucha here mm. in the store. So this tastes like, um, it tastes like a fizzy kombucha. Ew. Yeah. Mine tastes exactly as it should. It's good. It's a solid. So, if, so Ben, we rate our stuff from a one to five uh, pints. So I'm going to give this one a solid 4.25. Wow. 
Wow. 4.35. Yeah, it's it's good. That's solid. Yeah. Solid. So how, oh. what's your green tea there, Ben? Uh, how many how many it, pints is or it, mugs? Is it possible to be negative? <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, you can. Yeah, we're, so yeah, we're, it's, we're pretty we're pretty easy going on this show. It's a full half star or half 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 mug. pint. Yeah, pint. Half mug, whatever. Yeah. So is this something you regularly have and you're giving it a, a lot, <laughs> oh, yeah. right? Yeah. It's he <laughs> like that's that's his form of embracing the suck. It's hey, it was on sale. I mean for this <laughs> right. And you were Everybody. right. It's it it was filled up my, my cupboard in here, I promise. So uh-huh. you just gotta deal with it. That's or right. like we do, Sean and I, we just give it away if we and, don't like it. And after like six boxes, it's still not a quiet taste. <laughs> you know? Well, it's like drinking boiled grass, so I don't really I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, that's true. Yeah, but it's I green tea. Out, so so is that is it is yours, Sean, is it is it like did y'all ever have Mickey's Big Mouth? <laughs> Did you Mickey's that? Big Mouth. Is that you is that, that right next? Is that right next to Mad Dog? <laughs> well, if in the wine, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the wine has to be good if it has a screw top and an expiration date. But, yes. But that. No. Yeah. No. This this is uh this is a little I think a little better than that. Okay. Sounds like it. Mm-hmm. This is like in, drinking Boone's Farm. <laughs> So this, so this came in at, uh, this is a bigger can. I think this is a full pint. Um, or actually a little bit more, but this came in at 10 bucks for the can. <clears throat> so kidding. yeah, so it's, it had, it had better be good and it is. So okay. is it get- good? See, it's, that, that's how I rate movies. Either it's worth full price or it's not. So is this worth full price or is it not? That's a good question. Cause in a restaurant, it would definitely be worth the $10, but in the restaurant, it'd probably be 13 or something. Yeah. For, Cause it'd be two pours in a restaurant because it's, oh, yeah. it's high gravity. So, uh, so yeah, I think for a $10 at home sipping on a Friday afternoon, doing a podcast, it's worth it. Yeah. Very good. It's better than buying like a four pack or a six pack that you don't enjoy, mm. you know, where you kind of have to go through them and you're like, I don't, I don't just want to throw these away or give them away. Right. So, so what was your score, Jonathan? Then we'll move on to Facebook ads. That so that, that's the saving grace. I only have three of these left. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was a four pack. <laughs> You're uh, anyway, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm going to find some poor, um, poor soul to pawn these off on, and hey, you know. just keep it in your keep it in your Jeep there, your your truck, either one, and like just uh, next time you see somebody on the road on the corner panhandling, just yep. pass them a little strawberry bourbon ale. There you go. Help them get through the day. So I'm going to grade them on a curve because I like Kentucky. Uh, I'm going to give them a, so normally I might give this like a one, like a one, two. Hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a one, one, eight. Wow. One eight. Wow. So uh, that's not, not good. It's harsh, man. 8% Choke. ABV too. Wow. So what a waste. Man. Oh, well. Well, you drink them all fast. You won't know the difference. <laughs> So, yeah. See, ben, we we have to be honest on our show. We don't we don't give praise for for garbage. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's why we don't take sponsors. No, wait, that's not why. <laughs> that's not why. <laughs> All, All right, Ben. The beer I had was Goble. Do they still oh, make that? I have no Goble? idea. Goble? Goble was a step below Milwaukee's best. Uh the beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Have you had this? Uh, have you guys seen this Paps Blue Ribbon? Co- it's like this coffee stuff now. Uh, you can buy it in the. Uh, I think you can buy it like at a Publix or a grocery store, but they've got the Paps Blue Ribbon brew, coffee brew now, cold brew with alcohol. Hmm. Huh. I have got to find that. That sounds. Yeah. Well, if it's Paps Blue Ribbon. It has to be. <laughs> yeah, and it must be probably Folgers to go with it. <laughs> Folgers exactly. cold brew. Yeah. Only Maxwell the best, House. Baby. It's a cross. It's one of those cross brands, right? Maxwell House and yep. Paps Blue Ribbon together at last. <clears throat> What's that? When you when you can't wait for evening, <laughs> you need to start drinking early. That's the tagline. <laughs> I growing up where I did in Kentucky, it was all a dry county, and all the surrounding counties are dry. So we had to go to Tennessee to get any beer. So Paps Blue or Virginia, either one, we were right there. 
but Pabst Blue Ribbon, man, that that was that was the good stuff at the time. That was the gold standard before all these sissy little craft beers came along. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. So, all right. So you've already uh, started talking, Ben, about the number one thing, which was buying a course. I mean, that, that's absolutely, without a doubt, the first thing you have to do if you want a successful Facebook page, right? Better go and pay a lot of money and buy a course so that you can not watch it and get confused when you do watch it mm-hmm. and then circle back to it after you put it down for a month, <laughs> you know, because you're just like, I don't, I don't even know if I want to do this. Yeah. I don't even know if I want to be in business. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, do you do you agree with the idea that the more you spend, the more useful the content? <laughs> well, if it's my content, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if they're getting it from me, yes, hundred percent. Yeah. Other people, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. So, so do you think a good course is in the ninety-seven dollar range, thirty-seven, or like a nineteen ninety-seven Facebook course? I mean. I, Anna, I, my my thought is when you're first starting, I say you better keep it under hundred bucks. Yeah, you know, you just keep it under hundred bucks. See, I, see, I would go straight to the top. I mean, I don't want I want all the shortcuts. I don't want just one shortcut. Right. Like I don't want just one magic bullet. I want to know all the things about Facebook. So I, I'm I'm going to do the two thousand dollar course, and then I'm going to take the fifty thousand dollar coaching upsell. <laughs> And then I'm going to be out of money and I won't be able to run ads, but that's okay because oh, I'll know everything. But you'll know. You right. know, all of us have had clients like that, though. They're just suckers. They just psh, boom, boom, boom. They hit every upsell yeah. and, and they don't implement hey, a thing. Easy now. I've been that guy. <laughs> yeah, I have too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't because I just ta- I just log into whatever they buy, you know, so I'm just kind of... Uh, <laughs> riding on their uh but jonathan's a cheapskate he's like <laughs> he's thrifty though right he's that's like hey right. that's right man hey pat I, I just he, saw on a seinfeld that apparently cheapness is a skill so <laughs> i i like to call it frugality yes <laughs> i like works jonathan's like jonathan's like it's called password because you're supposed to pass it over to me <laughs> that's that's why it's called a password exactly so, all right. So, yeah. So just, just obviously being facetious there. Uh, yeah. That's what a lot of people do first, right? They try to buy a course. They spend a lot of time. They get really frustrated. Like, tell us like kind of what your counterpoint to that is. Yeah. So the, the, the people spend a lot of time trying to learn a lot of things and trying to figure out the magic buttons, mm-hmm. right? They're trying to figure out the check box that makes it all work or the, the targeting option that unlocks everything or, or the exact ad copy or image or whatever it is. And it just doesn't work out that way. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of check boxes and buttons on Facebook. There is. And and, and so th- that begs the question, are they all useful? And so I'll, I'll put it like this, you know, if, if you're a solopreneur ish type person, mm-hmm. 99% of that stuff is not useful for you. Cause you're probably not going to spend enough money to where it's effective, for whatever those check boxes are. Most of those tools that they roll out just aren't great for smaller advertisers. So when you say smaller advertisers, what per day spend are you talking about? So let's say anybody's spending less than $200 a month. Okay. Okay. That's it's most of those aren't good for people spending somewhere between 200 and say, I don't know, thousand dollars a month mm-hmm. some of them are good for then the people are spending more than a thousand i mean a, a, a day not a month then the people who are spending more than a thousand dollars a day then not all the tools are fair game okay all right so what's the number two on your on your mug of uh, wisdom there so this is the next thing for those things spend hours learning how to write great copy oh this this is a very dear and near to my heart yeah. So item number two is spend hours learning how to write great copy. Right. As if you could even learn it in hours. Oh, no. Yeah. Abs- well, I've got a course that they could <sighs> certainly learn. And, you know, yeah. un- it's, you know, I think of like that kind of thing, whether it's Facebook ads or copy or anything, sales, like it's kind of like Karate Kid, you know, when he learns just enough yeah. little uh, karate to go out to the beach and get his butt kicked. Like that's what I feel like a lot of these courses do for you. Like it's a little false pride and uh, yeah. So spend hours learning how to write copy. Like why do people fall into that? Like 
why do, why is that such a prevalent myth? Well, don't you think, I mean, don't you think that people hear that they need to be able to write good copy and they need yeah. to have good copy. So they think, Absolutely. well, it's just copy. It's not really a skill. I mean, it's just copy. It's just writing words. I know how to write, you know, I went to college or whatever. I can read a book. So I know yeah. how to write. And so, so that somehow that translates over into writing, you know, direct response type copy. It just doesn't work like that at all. So, you know, most of uh, we know all these things on your mug here, except number five is going to be kind of tongue in cheek. So, I mean, there is a lot of people that would say, Hey, you need to write, learn to write good copy. So you're kind of saying you don't really need to know great copy or not spend hours learning it. So, and I would agree. I like, I think everybody would say, yeah, you need to, your ads have to convert. They have to. So if it's not learning great copy, how do you do it? Well, if you're, I mean, from a lot of business owners, um, if they know their ideal client or customer, if they understand them, mm -hmm. then in many ways they can write some amount of copy that's really going to connect with them because they already know the words that those people are, the, their ideal people are using. So they can already kind of put that down. You know what I mean? Yep. So it's so, a, go ahead. so they just talking more conversationally. Yeah. Instead of trying to learn the tricks and the techniques and, you know, using a swipe file from 50 years ago and which, you know, we all love. And if you really know how to do, how to use those, the principles behind them, they're great. But if you don't, you're probably just doing just enough to get yourself hurt. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, and you were um, mentioning something the other day, you know, Sean about, you know, just this little, and I don't want to say little, but sometimes small tweaks mm -hmm. really can make a big difference Yeah, in, in doing it. And, and that is true. I mean, copies, you know, I usually tell my clients, I'm like, listen, if I could tell you one thing to work on to improve your business, it's learn how to write better copy, you know? But you don't have to have it to launch an ad. Is that what you're saying? You don't have to. Mm -mm. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. I and know. Uh, you're better off you'd be better off testing out a bunch of different ones as fast as humanly possible instead of trying to make the one perfect one. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah. So sounds like number one and number two, uh, can be a little bit of a procrastination tool as much as anything. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause none of us do that or Jonathan doesn't actually. No, he's an implementer. He's an implementer for sure. But yep. the, you, you and I, Ben, we have a little more, <laughs> <laughs> especially me. Um, I want to get to the wishy-washy with over uh, images. That sounds yeah. fun. <laughs> so number three, number three on the old mug of wisdom <laughs> is be wishy-washy over which image to use. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> man, you can fret over images all day long. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, there's just so many. So tell me what you're thinking, Jonathan. Well, so let's just talk, let's hash this out. What are, what are, what's working most that you're seeing? And I know it just depends, but so you're seeing, I think we're all seeing a lot of people with COVID right now. A lot of people are do. I, I tend to see more ads for people that are, you know, launching, you know, businesses, platforms surrounding, you know, you name it. I'm getting targeted for everything from uh, create a, you know, podcast course and your know, pod, podcast courses on teaching podcasting to, uh, funnel marketing. I mean, you name it right now. So, but, so I see a lot of combinations of things. Um, I see some video and then I see some images that are, and then some are just kind of really unique images that kind of make you, um, do a double take. And I don't know if it's, that's the whole purpose to get your attention. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know what's, um, what are you seeing? I mean, what are, what are people into right now and and what do you recommend? And, and how do you get them away from just being wishy-washy? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they got to work on their thoughts. They got to learn how to manage their thoughts. <laughs> so if you get away from being wishy-washy, it's just that simple. Right? Yeah. Um, but that being said, uh, what do I see out there? I mean, I see similar things. Um, and so I, I really think what the key to it really is, is, is about is understanding, first of all, who your audience <clears throat> is. Second of all, understanding where they are. Right, they're on Facebook. What are they on there for? 
you know, not your ad. That's for sure. That's right. They're not on there to see anybody's ad. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I am, but, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm with a few, right. <clears throat> but everybody else is on there to look at somebody else, read about somebody else. And so there's kind of this myth that's been perpetuated from old school uh, marketing days that, you know, oh, don't use your own image. Mm-hmm. They don't care about you, mm-hmm. you know, and that, it's not that there's not truth to that. Right. But, but in reality, when people are scrolling down through their newsfeed, they're looking at other people. I mean, that's sure. the whole point. And so people connect with people. It's, it's just the way it is. They don't connect with businesses. And so a lot of times and not, it's just not universally true. Like it's not one size fits all, right? If you're running, if you're selling socks, so let's just say, you know, you're selling a deluxe pair of Instagram socks, right? Where my dog, I don't know if you can see that Instagram system, <laughs> but where my, you know, Facebook sent those to me, my dogs chewed them up. It's different than if you're selling, you know, a high ticket coaching. Yeah. Right? I mean, those are two different things, right? So socks, you want to show the socks. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's just not that, it's not rocket science or maybe it is rocket science. I don't know. I but. Don't know. If but coaching, coaching is completely different. You want yeah. a personality behind that, right? It, I mean, and, it, so. and it's true for most service-related businesses. Now, yeah. It could be, it could be roof repair, mm-hmm. right? So you're, you're putting yourself out there. So just in terms of the aesthetics of it, black and white has been converting. Mm-hmm. I, why I don't know. Like but black I, and white photography or black and white, black and white images. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, recently, I mean, I've. And so what's been really interesting is it's been different for different audiences, but I have been testing a lot of it, both on, on Facebook and Instagram. And for the most part, it converts better. The click through rates, like you may not get as many clicks or, but when they click, they convert. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So one dude I see on Facebook, he's marketing uh, podcast training. Mm-hmm. And he's using, uh, he's using an image of, uh, or he's actually using a snippet. And you, you guys may have seen this, but he's using a snippet. I guess he interviewed Grant Cardone, and uh, so he's inter- He's like using that little snippet of Grant Cardone, who happens to be that's Ben's favorite. That's your idol, Ben. A conversation about. <laughs> so I had to, I had to bring that up. Ten <laughs> X, <10X>, baby. <laughs> But he's using he's using the snippet of Grant Cardone saying, "Man, you're a great interviewer. I'm going to send some of my buddies over to you." And that's just that's all it is. <laughs> There's no context or anything. It's not just even the that guy, it, you know. And it's like the guy's image over to the side. But the main thing is Grant Cardone because mm-hmm. we know that's what sells. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that does work. I mean, so we were looking at, and I've forgotten who it was. I think it was Sam Ovens or somebody who. who <laughs> was running ads and in the ad copy, they would mention famous people within the ad copy right. about the in you know, within the industry, right? Like an implied endorsement. Sure. Exactly. It works. And yeah, I mean that, that sure is effective, right? It's still effective. Yeah. Especially I mean, if you had just been taking that clip from anywhere though. That's right. you know? <laughs> yeah. But I bet you it worked. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it did from, from that standpoint. Um, I tell you what I get asked a lot about images is, Oh, should I put text over it or not text? Or, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like this debate about whether you should do it or not. And I'm like, why can't you do both? See, isn't that the great thing about Facebook and running ads is that you can put them both out there and figure it out relatively inexpensively and fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, um, because there's still a rule to that in terms of the, the amount of text you can, you yeah. can put on that. What's what's the what's the rule there? The rule is, is that you're not, and this it doesn't matter whether it's Facebook or Instagram. I mean, it's the same thing. So it's twenty percent. So that you can't have more than twenty percent text overlaying the image. However, there's I, I, I was telling you they have this. Facebook has this tool that you can upload it and check it, mm-hmm. and it'll say just about anything's fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you can see half of it with text. So. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's what's in the guidelines. Sure. I mean, okay. Let me, let me take that. Let me back step. It's not technically 20% anymore. What they did was is they have a grading system. They say, okay, well, if it's in X percent to X percent, we'll still show your ad, but we won't show it to as many people. Right. 
right? And if it's this percent, we'll show it to even less, and this percent, it won't show at all, and that kind of thing. So are they doing like rated thing? Do you know if they're doing like actual like pixel count so that like they're cut in between no. the letters, or if it's just the block where the letters are? It's they do it in blocks. Yeah, okay. at least that's the way the tool was set up. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah, that would be interesting if they were doing it by little, you know. But <laughs> then you could use skinny font and maybe get away with more. So I just kind of wanted to mention, so what ty other types of images, right? So some people don't want to use images of themselves, right? So should the image be, you know, for shock value or should it be, you know, something that's indicative of whatever people are going to be clicking on it for, right? Mm -hmm. with, with the next thing. So in an ideal situation, you would want everything to be congruent. So it, almost a seamless transition from the ad to the click to the neck to the landing page or wherever it is that you're sending them once they click, like it all kind of matches up. Right. All right. There's not a whole lot of difference. So it's a seamless process. However, the, the, the only challenge is, is if you can't get them to click in the first place, you'll never get them to where you want them to be. So sometimes you have to put in some shock value type images. Mm -hmm. um, and, and those are okay. I mean, and sometimes simple images work. Like I, I, we have an image right now. It's the ugliest image I've ever seen with a blue, light blue background and two toothbrushes. <laughs> right. And that's it. Yeah. And that thing, I mean, I, I, it gets, I mean, the click through rates on it's crazy. Right. What kind of client is that for? Um, she does relationship coaching. Wow. So it's a his and hers kind of. Right. Yeah. I guess. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So that was very, that was a, uh, that was, just, did you pick that or did she pick that? Sure. I picked it. No, I didn't. Pick <laughs> it. As a matter of fact, though, she actually just told me, she's like, I'm so booked up. She goes, she goes can you turn down the ad speed? <laughs> Twice this week. Nice. Yeah. I can give you a link if you want to redirect some of that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah. All right. So number four on the mug of wisdom is uh freak out about tech. Mm. Oh my God. Like that's that's my specialty is freaking out about <laughs> tech. Like I'm world class at freaking out about tech. So uh I think I've got that one nailed, but tell us kind of why you put that on the mug. Uh man, I, I think that or when I'm talking to people about it, they act like they have to know everything that there is to know before they can do it, before they can input it, or they get to the first screen and they shut down because it's overwhelming, right? Like the ads manager, or the whatever business yeah, manager, yeah. Or whatever. Put in the ad. Yeah. You know, but ironically, they have no problem posting pictures and posts and stuff like that, you know, and, you know, figuring out just how to do that kind of stuff and gifts and you know, whatever, no problem. Yeah. And these fancy Instagram stories and yeah. they got quizzes on them and you know, polls and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And so I haven't figured those out either, by the way. So uh, yeah. <laughs> really, but, um, I need a person for that. But I always tell people on my podcast, I'm like, look, you can get your 13 year old neighbor to come over there and input it for you. Yeah, they they could never have done it and do it in about five minutes. Yep. You know, so if yep. that if that's truly going to be an issue, then get get the neighbor to do it. Yeah. But the the thing that I like to do is look is to try to just keep that really simple, right? What's the goal of the ad? What are you trying to accomplish with it? What do you want to spend on it? And inputting your career and and who do you want to show it to and inputting the ad itself, the creative part. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it does walk you step by step it through does. the process. It, does. Right. it just, you know, when it all started out, Facebook really had two interfaces. And so some people were using one and some were using the other and blah, blah, blah. And they finally did away with that. But one of the other challenges is now they have a way to quickly create it. That's what they, their quick creation. And then they have another one that's a more old school one. And it, it's still confusing, right? Because now it's like, well, which way do I, which one do I go to to put this in or that in, or do they combine or how does that work? And it, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like, Hey, 
just and 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 to make it matters even worse is that right now some people have a completely different it's not completely different but it's uh, it's it's significantly different interface there's a third one out there mm. that some people have access to and some don't and so when you watch a video or a training or something like that you're like oh that doesn't match up right you know and or if the training is six months old and yeah you know they yeah. move some stuff around yeah then you get frustrated then you yeah. got to upgrade your course that you bought that's right i love it <laughs> to get the most relevant information yeah so all right so we've talked about to recap we've talked about the five steps to create an ads to convert number one take a course right you got to take a course you got to you got to spend all that time and energy you, you know forget about just the step by step inside facebook just take a course let them tell you what the step-by-step -step inside of Facebook says Two, spend hours learning how to write great copy because, you know, you know, that's what copywriters tell you to do. That's it's gotta be hard or you can't charge a lot as a copywriter. I know that. And then, uh, three, be wishy-washy over image, which images to use because, you know, it, it like really matters it, until it doesn't. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be better just go ahead and just test a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Uh, number four is freak out about tech, either Facebook itself or the integrations, like the next step and all that kind of stuff. Um, before we go on to number five, because number five is a big one. <laughs> Jonathan, I want to like, what questions do you have left? For, for uh, So I've master? got, so I either want to see something. Can you share some, some ads that you've been working on, Ben? Or is that like, is that? Yeah. I think that violates HIPAA. Does that violate HIPAA? Yeah. We'll have to ask HIPAA. How do we, how do we call HIPAA? Uh, we haven't, we haven't done a lot of our, our uh, dials yet. We need to, maybe we should call that's Facebook right. report. That's right. We should. Sean and I, we've done some prank calls li uh, recently. So Is that, that right? Fun. Yeah. yeah we, we do the, I, we I think do that would be even more fun with Ben online. What do y'all yeah. like? The jerky boys? <laughs> Well, we just we pulled up some old ads recently and just called their, uh, uh, you know, called the numbers eight hundred numbers. They're, yeah, they're eight hundred numbers to uh, to reach out to them. Of course, you know, some of them are pretty ancient. So yeah, but they they answered. They were just like selling something totally different now. Ah, uh, but, okay. but the number was still active. So interesting. All right, so here before you pull this up, Ben, I'm going to share my screen here for a second. Let me see how I can do this. Share screen. That'd be a good start. Uh, okay. I'm so, sharing. So for the listeners listening, I guess that would be all of you. Um, well, some of them may not be listening. They just may have it on. Uh, if you're on the, where, where's the streaming to Jonathan now? We're doing YouTube. <laughs> wow, <that's> so weird. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, wow. I got a little inception or something going on. Um, uh, this is streaming to Twitter and our YouTube page. Yeah. So. All right, I'm going to pull the, uh, here's the screen right here. All right, here's an example ad. Okay. I, so here's one I've been getting lately called uh, from. Ulysses uh, Wing. Ulysses Wing, all about human behaviors. Um, so the first thing I noticed is that, you know, pretty basic, uh, just their, you know, just a picture of their, obviously their product, 100% online, only $37. Yeah, but it's a high contrast image. Yep. Yep. Oh, Black and pink. Right there. Can you read the copy here? Do I need to ex uh, I can. enlarge it? Hey there, this is Ulysses. I like to tell you. Oh, see, I'd have to. I'd have to edit that copy from the first line. <laughs> but hey, this is this to the point. Like this is like I would already edit that first line, and obviously because Jonathan, you're seeing this over and over, it's probably mm. working. It hasn't been cut. Yeah. So even though it's got this weird kind of typo at the beginning. I like to tell you a little more about the NLP mastery method program. What is it all about? Who's it for? And how you can get it? Like that doesn't sound like a native English speaker. No. Um, it, it, yeah. I guess his last name is Wang, so he's probably maybe not. Um, but the fact is, like, you know, like you said, it's still running, and it caught your attention. Yeah, it is. It it caught my attention, but I haven't. One thing that I would, you know, I would uh, argue with is that. He hasn't really, he starts off this, this whole ad talking about what he's done, you know, right. him about himself. To me, he's wasting a lot of, 
uh, a lot of ad copy there just talking about you know 15 seconds about story about me don't care uh i teach you know really don't care you know blah 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 a lot of stuff that i don't care about yeah so it gets to the point down below well this is a which, terrible ad why'd you bring this one up well because <laughs> i wanted just to tear it apart uh, <laughs> go back to the topic make, okay make, makes you feel manly right. <laughs> yes very very top what's his name oh okay oh yeah we're gonna just <laughs> We're going to call gonna, him out on Twitter. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, he's going to look up his whole ad account. <laughs> <laughs> All about human behaviors, which is intriguing. That's what gets me to. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, that's right up your alley. Yeah. And so, and then I've clicked, obviously I've clicked on his link. Uh, so now um, you're being retargeted. Yep. And I get retargeted every time, but I haven't, I haven't like made the pool because I know I'm going to be upselled and it's just going to be put me on a list. I'm just going to get upselled. Oh, uh, I'm going to be in the upsell funnel for mm. for the next six months. So those dang uh, marketers. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, I, I wanted to pull this one apart just because like I was like when I first when I first analyzed this and I just wanted to hear your take, Ben. But when I and Sean, from a copywriting standpoint, when I first read this, I'm like, yeah, this is I mean, this is. Yeah. So from a copy standpoint, what I would say and what I've what I'm seeing working, um, first of all, sentences are too long. Um emojis in Facebook ad copy seems to be working. Do you agree with that, Ben? Like having yeah, emojis that matches your brand. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like too many is if it's not your brand, does it make sense? Mm -hmm. um, bullet points or at least dashes like bullet points. I mean, you can do, you can do emojis as bullet points. Sure. Um, just so if I just glance at this right now, just in general copy terms, it, it is a big, jumble of text as opposed to easy to read. Yeah. Like I would never, I don't think I would read this mm -hmm. uh, just because it just, it looks hard to read, especially on my phone uh, if I don't have my reading glasses. And yeah. uh, one of the companies I'm working with right now, we've found across 10 or 12 different brands and niches that 90% of people are on mobile. I don't know what you're finding, Ben. What are you finding as far as mobile versus desktop? Yeah. Mobile. So we're we're actually designing ad copy, landing page copy, um, everything mobile first and desktop second. Now that might be different if you were like if you know you're you're marketing to maybe someone who's in an office and uses a laptop and uses a desktop more. But the average consumer, so any type consumer or small B2B is probably on their phone and maybe even a lot of business people these days. Uh, I was walking yesterday morning on a trail that I walk every morning and uh, there was a guy, older guy, looked like an executive type and he was sitting there typing on his phone as he was walking down the trail, you know, doing, and you could tell it was, it looked more like a business thing. He would take off his glasses every once in a while, walk for a little bit, think, then he put them back on and type a little bit more. So he's, he was obviously writing some type of response or reply, but it just goes to show how much people are on their phone oh, yeah. as opposed to their computer. Like it's, it's insane. Um, so you, I think you have to think visually and you have to know, like if your person's above 45, 48, uh, then they probably need reading glasses. So yeah. you need bigger text. You need bigger, you need more white space between, your copy just so it's easier to read. Yeah. That, I mean, it's, that's true. That's just the way it went. And I agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah. That's just knowing your audience. I mean, that's the basics of knowing your audience. That doesn't require a course that doesn't require, you know, hours of copy and all the other <laughs> stuff we've talked about. Mm -hmm. It's just good understanding who you're targeting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. So, uh, we're running short on time here. Okay. Uh, Time right, flown by, <laughs> but I wanted to, I want wait, 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 don't go anywhere. I wanted to cover step number five. So we, we said this was five steps to creating ads that convert. Five steps. So what is the fifth step? Well, the, the fifth step is obviously to skip steps one through four and just hire me. There you go. <laughs> In my team, we, we got you covered. And I had one of the bet the, the, in fact, this relationship co coach, she had just hired, she just hired me a couple of weeks ago. And that next week, spontaneously she sent me a message and said she said 
I she got the, she said I had the best weekend I've had in so long because I didn't have to worry about my ads. Mm. Mm. Because you were taking, I knew you were taking care of them. She goes, that's I can't a, thank you enough. She goes, you know, and I'm that's like, a, that's a headline right there. Yeah, like I know. A, I, oh, I screenshotted it. You know, I copied and pasted it. I put it out. You know, it's out there. Yeah. But, so, but I'm he, like, he went to Fathead and got a poster blown up of it. Like, <laughs> I should have put that on the mug. If I had had it in the time, I would have put it on my mug. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, know. You can put it everywhere else. So, and how do people hire you? How do they find you? Well, the, I tell people this, you know, the thing about doing Facebook ads all the time is means I'm on Facebook all the time, which is kind of cool, but it also means I'm on Facebook all the time. And that makes me crazy. So message me on Facebook is usually a good bet, right? I mean, if that's what we're going to be doing, that's where you want to find me. Right. So you can email me Ben at one focus com, but I hate email. And so I don't check it nearly as often, but if you want to get something done, then just message me. Oh, it's Ben Blackman and M O N M O N. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. you have a pot and you had the podcast Facebook ads with the twain Facebook ads with the twain. Yeah. Do a search for that. That's a uh, do what that's good stuff. What do you, do you do what an episode a month or two uh, episodes a month? What do you do? My, from here on out, I'm doing, uh, I did them one, sometimes multiple ones a week. And then any, but anyway, my schedule now is once a week. Once a week. Okay, cool. And right now I'm in the middle of an Instagram ad series. So I'm actually, when I introduce it, I say Instagram ads with the twang. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, but, that'll be confusing for everybody. <laughs> they'll be all right. <laughs> they can just, you know, I can worry about that if I want to. Well, we got, we got to do, I know, Sean, you're short on time. So we got to do follow yeah, I want to get into some. I want to get into some ads and spend some time on that. So I could stay on if you want and do a second episode. Ben, you good? Yeah, I can, I can stay for a bit. This right. live stream's fancy. I can just duck it's, out and y'all can keep going. Yeah. I'll yeah. just, I can kick Sean off and yeah. Ooh, I like that. I keep going. Oh, you'd like to see that, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go to my uh, call where we're going to talk FDA and Facebook compliance. Ooh. Uh, for copy sounds exciting, doesn't it? On a Friday afternoon, I will need another beer for that. For sure. <laughs> yeah, or two at, yeah. at ten point one. You might, you know. Yeah, I might need one more. So, but uh, Ben, it's been good talking yeah. to you. I'm going to let y'all wrap up. I'm going to duck out, and if y'all do another episode, I guess I'll find out about it. If not, uh, I'll talk to you soon. All, All right, right, man. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good one. Have a great right. weekend. See you. All right. Now we can talk some really. <laughs> can I make a comment on that guy's ad? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because that's what I wanted to hear. Sean just kept talking, talking. <laughs> well, he has. He does have a lot of good feedback. That's <laughs> no, no. Um, uh, but yeah, please say something. Because I, I, there's a couple of other ads I wanted to compare that to. But go ahead. I want you. I want to hear your take on that. So there, there's two ways I would I would look at that. One. One of the things about Facebook or social media marketing in general is it's kind of this great equalizer, yep. meaning things that wouldn't have worked in our traditional marketing ways work in Facebook. Mm -hmm. Part of that's the way that the, the, the platform is because of how people are looking at stuff. Right. So the, the fact that his grammar may have not been great at the beginning or whatever, yeah. that actually might be a good thing. Right. Right. It might be. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. I mean, he may be retargeting you, but his initial target audience, maybe that's yeah. what he's trying to do for one reason or another. Well, yeah, and he's certainly been doing that. I'm trying to figure out what made what attracted me to the ad in the first place, because I'm certainly getting retargeted. Well, you can There's look at his ads. Huh? You can look at all his currently running ads. Yeah. If you know, and see. Yep. Um, and the, the what I'm seeing is is that the first the oldest ad that's currently running, it doesn't mean he wasn't running ads before, was like right. April 11th or something. Okay. The ad you're seeing started, um, I mean, there was one that started on May 8th. Okay. All so, right. So it's maybe too soon to know whether or not those are working. Sure. But, but something to think about is when you run an ad, even when you have, you know, grammatical, you know, mistakes, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what kind of mistakes in the ad. So there's mistakes. Once you've started accumulating social proof and after you have so much, if see, if you change the ad, it takes yeah. away all that social proof. Right. So it's like, do you change the ad and, and start over with social proof or do you just keep what you got and deal with it? Mm -hmm. 
yeah. so that that'll happen too. Yeah, interesting. So, so and, and from a copy, you know, there were some things that I and I wanted to get your take on that. I know Sean was talking about some of the some of the copy he wouldn't use. Um, you know, there to me, there's some wasted. Uh, obviously some wasted space there. There's some things that he did do. I, I mean, he used some social proof within that ad, yep. but to me, he wasted a lot of the first part of that ad uh, kind of talking about his background, introducing himself to me. I, I, I want to get your take. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like us on our podcast, wasting about, t- you know, 10 minutes talking about beer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's like, you know, some especially you know on Facebook, you want you got to get to your point because people are scrolling, man. I mean, they don't have time for it. So if it doesn't stand out to me, uh, and I don't know that that's the original ad that caught my attention. So I, you know, you've seen this guy's run several ads, but this ad, I just don't see as very. Um, it, it doesn't call out to me right away. It doesn't grab my attention right away. Well, you you mentioned Jonathan about him talking about himself a little bit and that kind of yeah. thing, and so. Again, and, and you know, look, if you'd have asked me years ago about this, I would have said one, I would have answered completely differently. But yeah, there's this thing about what we call story based copy, right? Ad. And so people want some some kind of background, you know, right? They're trying to read about other people already. Then sure. that kind of thing. So to me, what I don't like about it is he's using that. And now it, it, that could be a strict retargeting ad, like he are you've already clicked on something, so you already yeah. kind of know who the guy is now he's sure. just trying to tell you a little bit more about himself yep right so that yep. maybe that was the intent i, I just don't right. know right but even if it wasn't i don't like the way that that was set up because it's not a compelling story to begin with it has to be mm-hmm. I mean, there has to be pain points involved there and it's usually a situation of what it was like for him before what happened and what it's like for him today yeah right mm-hmm. that, that's the story Right. This and just, and and just say, instead of saying, here, you know, here's my background, let me just tell you about myself. It, it would have been more compelling if he had said, let me tell you what happened to me. Yeah. Uh, to me, that captures my attention. Here's what, you know, I lost, you know, $100,000 mm-hmm. uh, on, on a business, went bankrupt, you know, three times or whatever. And, uh, you know, whoa, you know, okay. So let me, that, let me hear more. Yeah. But uh, just simply introducing yourself. Yeah. I, I don't find that very compelling at all. Yeah. I had a miniature schnauzer. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, that's not compelling, you know, who, right. But what you're saying is hundred percent on point, you know, right. you're talking about, especially if you're targeting the right people, right. Mm-hmm. Or who are probably having a similar problem or that's a pain point for them because they went through or are going sure. through a similar experience. Right. So, um, yeah. So like, like I have a client and she, She's awesome, and she's a uh, she helps uh, women with over drinking, like they mm. drink too much. Okay, yeah, she's helping them with that, you know, and 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 kind of detaching all that shame and guilt that can go right. along. With them. But she talk, you know, we talk about her story in there because mm-hmm. that's how they relate to her. Oh yeah, you know. Um, but if but if she was in there selling a thirty seven dollar whatever, I mean that's not that's to me that's not the place for it. Right. Exactly. So, so can you share some some stuff that you maybe just some examples of some yeah, I'm, gonna sh- I'm gonna share a long running ad okay um and so it's funny about this stuff hold on just a second here let's see yeah okay i get that okay well that's great this i just say so you now it says a friendly heads up chrome has a bug that can cause screen sharing to crash on windows 10 <laughs> See what happens. Okay. Keep your fingers crossed. All right. Okay. So do you see the ad from Nicole? No. Is it coming? No. Nope. Not yet. Maybe it will in a second. This thing says you're in the show. Everyone can see in here. Oh, okay, never mind. But you can't see that. You can't see anything yet. I can't see anything yet. Let me try it again, maybe. Okay, share screen. I'm picking the monitor. And survey says. Oh, 
Oh, oh, I have to add it. That's my bad. Wait okay, there go. we go. I <laughs> Make me look like a good. Of course, I don't. I, I saw it down at the bottom. Like, oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, well, there it is. So, this ad right here, and I and I know Nicole wouldn't matter. I uh, wouldn't mind showing because you know this. I mean, she's she's amazing. Okay, sure. I'm just telling you, this is. I mean, <laughs> she does business. If you follow her, mm -hmm. even though her primary focus is on people who own uh, fitness businesses and health coaches, oh. I mean, she's a she's a master at, at marketing. It's good for anybody. Um, and her whole, uh, just a little background, her whole thing is about, you know, doing, converting people and, and, and authentically. Like right. she, she, the whole reason she do, even does this is because she saw this junk out there. Sure. And, you know, she's like, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to, uh, you know, help people and be authentic about it and show them how to do it. She, she, I mean, she created this massive business, no website. She didn't have a web, I mean, nothing. No website. Yeah, yeah. She and now she has one, but it, it's I mean it's like one page or it's something. More of a, yeah, it's a landing page. Yeah. She doesn't even you know, yeah, yeah. So we do landing pages. We have a landing page service for this and stuff. Mm -hmm. But so just to kind of look at it, um, we, we this ad I think has been running for well over a year or a year and a half, maybe two mm -hmm. years now. Actually, now I'm thinking about it because well, anyway, something like that. Sure. And, and you normally you don't find that anymore right like right. you can't run ads that long they wear out or whatever it is right but in her particular case the offer is so compelling um, because it addresses such a pain point for fitness professionals that it just works and works and works yeah okay? and so you can see it right here where it says the fast content creation formula for fit pros mm. so we're calling out who it's for yep. and we're telling them what they get yeah right? and so specific. yeah Discover how to create 30 days of powerful content in less than an hour. Okay. I mean, that, 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 see, the, one, yeah. of their, one of their pain points is they, they don't have to, they're like, man, I don't have time to post, don't have time yeah. to create all this junk and blah, blah, blah. Well, this solves that problem right? in less than an hour. Absolutely. Right. Um, and so that's what we're talking about in the copy, right? So we're talking about, we're using more or less the problem, agitate, mm -hmm. solve. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so you list the bullets, maybe because they, <clears throat> so that, why don't they do it? Maybe because I don't have the time, I don't know what to post, I don't know where and when to post, I don't know how to create real engagement. So yeah, I mean, those are all obviously, you know, scratching, you know, that um, that problem. You know, here's why I'm not doing it, obviously. Yeah, that's exactly right. And um, yeah. it... it that's kind of where they're, I mean, that's where they are. They're, we're, we're having the conversation that's already going on in their mind. Yeah. We're just bringing it to the forefront and having them address it. And then reassuring them, you're not alone. You know, other people face the same problem. So it's right. not like you're, you know, it's not like you're crazy or you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people in your same situation. Mm -hmm. So it reassures them that they're, they're in the same boat with a lot of people. And, uh, and and she's willing to help. She's providing that service. So, right. and here you go. This is it. This cool. Is and so that one's been super effective for us. So I, 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 it's one of the longest running ones that I have. And by the way, I was mentioning, um, I have another uh, coach, another person that does seven figures in coaching. Mm -hmm. And she, we were talking about, I was talking about the incorrect, you know, gra grammatically incorrect or something. There's an error in her ad. Mm -hmm. um, in her ad copy. Mm -hmm. um, and, but we've been, I mean, because it does so well, <laughs> I mean, it's been running for close <laughs> to a year and a half. Yeah. Mm. Just, we're just not willing to give it up, you know, because now there's so many likes and shares and comments and just on and on and on. And it's like, it's not worth it. And it's, what is the, it, it's grammat, you say it's grammatically incorrect. I think, right? I think it's actually, um, yeah, I, I can't remember. I think it's a misspelling. Okay. You know, because people comment on it occasionally. Right. You know, and they, they'll say stuff like, <laughs> I would never buy anything from somebody <laughs> who spelled something on their website or in an ad. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. yeah, you will. <laughs> you ever buy Walmart, Target. I mean, you know, yeah. Come on. Well, that's, that's total garbage. I yeah. mean, I, 
I remember I'm, hearing Dave Ramsey when he first post when he first published his first uh, ever book. He was filled with all kinds of grammatically incorrect uh, <laughs> misspellings, all the you know everything you can imagine. His you know his fir- the very first financial peace book that he ever published. Yet he sold you know thousands and thousands of copies, hundreds of thousands of copies. So I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean. It's just amazing. I wanted to show you, she did a, uh, Nicole did a five day challenge and I wanted to show you the ads from mm-hmm. there, but their dynamic ads and the way mm-hmm. they're set up. I can't, I can't share them with you without showing more than she would, uh, that I would be okay with. So, yeah. but just let me, I mean, just, uh, just kind of point that out. So the way those ads are set up mm-hmm. a dynamic ad, all that means is without, I mean, it, it's not complicated is instead of using one image, Maybe you pick five images. Yeah. Right. So you can you can worry about picking five images. Right. And, and that's the whole point is to split test and see what's uh, what's pulling yeah. pulling the best. So is that typically when you're when you're working with when you're first consulting with uh, clients and they want to run they want to start running ads at the very minimum are you are you telling them you know we need to look at five five to ten uh, to start with. It, so that we can start kind of tracking. And it a lot of it depends on their budget. Yeah. Right. Because I would rather have a lot of information about two images than sure. just a little bit of information about five. Right. And so some of it depends on budget mm-hmm. and some of it depends on what the goal is and that yeah. kind of thing too. But yeah, I mean, I, and you, usually I create the images. I mean, mm-hmm. we, do, we do all that so they don't have to worry about it. I mean, that's why they're hiring us. Yeah. And yeah. And so like in Nicole's case, and it, it, I was just saying it cause we just wrapped up this, it was a five day challenge on yeah. how to create content. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that's, we just got done doing that. So, so it's on my mind. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we did like four or five images, couple of black and whites thrown mm-hmm. in there just to see, yeah. you know, which ones were working and that kind of thing. And how long do you typically run, run a series of ads before you can get enough data? Or, and feedback mm-hmm. and, and be able to determine, okay, this is, this is way, or these two, maybe these two ads out of the group are way out pulling everything else. So we're just going to, you know, focus, you know, like Pareto, Pareto's principle focus, you know, most of our efforts on the, on the top performing. Yeah. So part of it depends on uh, part of it's a, a time mm-hmm. thing because Facebook, you, you have to give Facebook a chance to work its magic. Yep. Right. And so if you don't, it's easy to cut off an ad that you think's not working. So I, an example that I've used for a lo- the longest time is I had this, an opt-in, not unlike Nicole's. Mm-hmm. When I first started running the ad, what I decided to do was to share it with my audience every day, what the results were. Mm-hmm. And so on one given day, I was, it was only like it was a small budget, like 20 bucks a day. I mean, it was sure. nothing, right? Right. And so, um, I, as I started running the ad, it was like the first day or the, and within the first couple of days, I only had like one person opt in it. So it was like $20 to get somebody to opt in. Sure. But then 10, I let the ads run cause I know to be patient. So I let the mm-hmm. ad run and like five days later I had like, you know, 10 opt-ins at $2 a piece. Okay. I'm like, well, you know, if I had looked at one day, mm-hmm. one day's data, you know, either side, I would have had two totally different thoughts about whether it was working or not working. Right, right. And that's the thing. You know, there's a cyclical part of it. And Facebook, Facebook doesn't know. They're trying to figure it out. They're trying to achieve the goal that you told them. Yeah. And so as far as Facebook knows, $20 a day could have been a good cost. They don't yeah. know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so they're trying to figure it out. So how long do I let it run? <laughs> and that kind of thing. What kind of metrics do I use? Well, the rule of thumb is, and this is not an absolute, but the rule of thumb is you want to let it run for somewhere between at least three to five days. Yeah. Depending on your budget. If you only got, you know, if you don't have a budget and you're just trying to do it at $5 a day or something like that, just remember it's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. So you have to be extremely patient with those because it takes a while to get enough people through. Sure. So when you have, I mean, the, you really want to try to get at least like if you're doing an opt-in in this particular case, you want to at least get 50 people 
to mm-hmm. sign up. Once you've gotten 50 people to sign up, then you can look at the numbers and say, okay, what do I need to change? Right. You know, is it always true? No. It, yeah. You know, you, you have to use, apply some common sense to it, but what you don't do is, you, you know, like it says on my mug that you do, you say no <laughs> to ad drama, no <laughs> to ad drama, right? Because <laughs> all of the numbers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you, and one of the, uh, one of the other things I always tell people is don't make big decisions on small numbers. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't have very much data in, then you can't really, the decision, yeah. you know. Absolutely. You know, I see that all the time where somebody had like three sales, you know, <laughs> and if they'd have just had a fourth, it would have been great. Mm-hmm. Right? But because they only had three, and I'm like, well, in a given day, yeah, you know, I mean, come on. Yeah. So. Yeah, you got to let it play out. So we're running short. Last yeah. question I want to get into before we uh, before we sign off, and we we definitely got to do this again because there's so much more that uh, we could talk about here. But uh, I know Facebook's, you know, there, nothing's changed with them. They're still kind of they, you know, there's still some boundaries that you can cross. Yeah. Uh, and you know this, you you work with so many clients. What what? You know, are, are, are things any, how should I say this? Have got things gotten any lax, uh, any more lax, or is it even more stringent? Uh, and are they, are they really strict? And what are some of the things that you cannot do when, in terms of, you know, making promises and ads and things like that? Are they more strict? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yes. or if, if, Ratcheted. I, so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I know that in the past when I had, um, I had, cause I've had some clients in the past that have run ads uh, on their own and they've had accounts shut down and, you know, I mean, it's common yeah. practice. If you make a promise, especially in a health related oh, field, yeah. uh, you start making promises or start even, I mean, even if you're, it seems like if you're tiptoeing on the edge there where you're even using testimonials or sending them to a landing page where it's got a promise on the landing page. It may not even be in your ad. Um, Facebook will flag you. So Mm -hmm. I, I'm just curious, you know, have you seen, what are some things that you see that are, that are, you know, quite frankly, no, no's when it comes to um, running ads. There's, there's some absolute no, no's. And then there's some gray area. No, no's. Sure. Right. I guess that's true with everything really. Yeah. Um, and and it's like yourself, it pays to know people. It I does. mean, you do this for a living and you you you're on the phone. I'm sure you're connected with the people at Facebook and and that's the benefit of having kind of an intermediator like yourself, is that somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, they're getting out there throwing stuff and they get shut down. They don't know who to call. They don't know who to get in touch with. <laughs> I, I get people contacting me a lot because of their account got shut down. They they don't know what to do. Right. And um uh, Seems to it goes in spurts. So Facebook has like these random periods during the year where there's like these mass shutdowns. I mean, yeah. I, I saw a guy's account shut down. He was selling guitar lessons. I mean, I'm just not sure if there could be anything more benign than guitar <laughs> lessons. You know, and how could you really make that? You know, and and sometimes it's a mistake. I mean, they'll and Facebook right. will say that. Sure. But, you know, it's such a big company that they're. Unless you're a super huge player, you just mm-hmm. got to play the waiting game with it, right? And yeah. there's things you can do to mitigate it. And part of that is, you know, it's exactly what you talked about. So let's just say weight loss. Weight loss, it's not that you can't do stuff in weight loss. It's how you position. It's what you say. What they don't want is exactly what you said, mm-hmm. exactly what you said. They, they don't want you to imply that somebody's going to get a specific result. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. even if you have a million testimonials that people got them, doesn't matter. Right. They're worried that they're going to get sued over it. Yeah, absolutely. So if you stick, stay away from the, it, it not, it's not that you can't say the word you. A lot of people will tell you, well, don't say you. Don't say mm-hmm. you're going to, you know, but you can't say you're going to get this result or you right. will get this result. Sure. You know, you just can't imply that. And right. same way on the landing page, just like, you know, wherever you're sending them to, it has to be compliant just like the ad does. Yeah, right. You no know, before and after pictures. Um, they don't like that. Yeah. You know? Um, MLM is tough. Mm, like yeah, that's, that. that's a big one. Yeah. Multi-level marketing. It can be tough. Yeah. Um, anything that has to do with making money or business, 
it's, you know, but I will tell you something that tends to work. Mm -hmm. is that if you will put a disclaimer in the ad itself, mm -hmm. Facebook likes that. Oh, okay. So, you know, every time you see a disclaimer, it's on this little small print, you know, that you can't read and see mm -hmm. wherever it is. I'm like, why? Why not just say, hey, I can't, why not? The, why doesn't the disclaimer just say, hey, look, I can't guarantee that you're going to make money with this. Sure. I mean, who can? Come on, let's right. be realistic. you got to put in the work, the effort, and the time. And even then, it may not work. Yeah. You know that. And, you know, why not make that the disclaimer? I mean, we all know it anyway. Mm -hmm. you know, and it does not hurt ad performance at all. And if anything, I think it helps in some regards. No, absolutely. Because you feel, it feels like, to me, from my standpoint, it feels more credible if yeah. you put that instead of promising everything under the sun. That's right. I mean, let's just be real about it. And I think that's sure. what makes marketing work differently now in some, mm -hmm. in some respects. Hmm. Um, and there's a few other things, but, but I will say, I mean, I, you know, I've run ads for people who, um, who were helping people, you know, uh, stop porn addiction. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, you can do that. Right. I mean, it's not like you can people say, Oh, you can't run. Yeah, you can. Right. Uh, but I will say this dating, dating's a tough one. So if you're yeah. like a dating coach or you have some kind of dating service or something, that's, that's hard. That's a tough one. Huh? Yeah. yeah, there's some, there's some, definitely some, uh, some areas you can cross the line on that one. <laughs> it is truly, <laughs> but yeah. It, and you referenced weight loss. That was, you know, I had a client years ago that was, uh, you know, he was a surgeon, you know, so, um, mm. he wanted to run all these before and after with, uh, you know, that was, uh, Doesn't that happen. was not a good thing, you know, and he was using, obviously he was using, another company that was, that was running these and they were getting shut down. So it, uh, you know, it was just, you know, it was one thing after another. Yeah. Just be cautious by of saying, Oh, I saw somebody else run it. Well, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it got approved. Doesn't mean it'll stay approved. Exactly. And, you know, maybe they're spending 5 million a month and you're right. only spending 500 a month. Well, right. that's exactly. <laughs> not a level playing field. Let's nope. not pretend like it yeah. is. That's yeah. right. Uh Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to run. Oh no, no worries. Uh, our time is—it's uh, been fun, man. It, it flies when you're uh, when you're having fun, Ben. I appreciate you coming on, man. It's always good to catch up, and we'll have we'll have to do this again. All right, buddy. All right, take care, man. Have a great weekend. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, good to Bye. see you. Take Bye. care.